Hi, this is your host of Bhartia and welcome to another special episode of TFR Let's Talk. And we are here at KubeCon and CloudedCon in Detroit. And today we have with us Victor Gamov, Principal Developer Advocate at Kong. Vic, it's great to have you on the show. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. First of all, tell us a bit about your experience here at KubeCon and CloudedCon from the perspective of security. So uh, KubeCon is always a great uh, event for meeting people, meeting customers, meeting prospects, and uh, meeting with some uh, real uh, use cases, like real world use cases. People come in with uh, different questions around, you know, how to, I am come from the API company, so that's why the end goal for me will always how the people protecting their APIs and how they dealing with the situations when the, with the API is becoming a, you know, another vector of attack for them. Um, and a lot of conversations we have on uh, integration with uh, third-party uh, OpenID um, Connect type of uh, configurations where the people uh, focusing on like authorizing right people, as well as when we are running this in the public clouds and things like that, people want to secure inside you know, their applications that runs inside the public clouds and make sure that the communication between those services that they build through APIs um, also secured. We keep hearing reports about increasing threats. We are seeing a rise in API attacks as well. So talk a bit about the threat that you are seeing, how vulnerable are organizations today? So this is a very interesting thing because um, the, the previously the lot of vectors of attack was like exposed uh, data services and some sort of like databases in the past. Like we've seen a lot of um, like uh, unauthorized access to I know, MongoDB instances and people over the time learn how to protect those things so they're not exposing those things. And the way how the services communicate these days are uh, through uh, APIs. And uh, when they have the API in the public internet, so it naturally becoming a threat for and uh, different uh, people who want to pick inside and see what is going on there. They're trying to see what are things available to do. So first of all, probably if you do any some sort of like a data modifications, all these things uh, would be probably uh, exposed to outside world without authorization, probably will you know, be asking for the troubles. Um, the, some of the read-only APIs probably will not make much of sense. However, like if you keep uh, exposing this like read-only APIs, you can get a denial of service of attacks when you know the, the people will try to kind of like uh, create a multiple requests to the same thing. And uh, we as a vendor, we won't like to provide the tools for developers uh, to um, to protect against this type of stuff. So like for like simple use case where denial of service, uh, rate limiting is probably one of the most popular plugin that uh, people use in open source or Kong Enterprise to configure um, kind of like a back off type of policies for, for different requests. Um, uh, the caching is also helping to alleviate this kind of load to application service. It's just like, you know, if they are calling dummy service and they're trying to, uh, or like a picking and seeing how like a, if we will be able to generate enough load to um, make the service go out of service. Um, the caching also helps, so that's why they're just always getting the result from, from the cache somewhere. It's another like a popular thing. Um, from perspective of like a protection of the things, as I already mentioned, the, with the rise of um, decentralized the, the user management and uh, people using more and more uh, technologies around like OpenID Connect, they're using Okta, using like a, a Azure um, Active Directory for managing users and uh, integration with those tools for, for, for Kong is also important. Um, so developers don't have to implement this. So we implement and enable across multiple things. So as much as a, they uh, want to have protection against all the services, we will provide this type of plugins for them, and they will just simply use this for you know for any application that they expose. Right, uh, there are technologies, but you can bring a horse to a lake, but you cannot make a drink, which brings to the point of cultural changes. Uh, talk a bit about the importance of cultural changes that are needed, so folks can actually leverage these technologies and protect themselves. Yeah, perfect. That's a very good, great question. So essentially, in, in my opinion, when I think about this type of things, uh, about awareness, some of the things that you cannot monitor, cannot track, you cannot control. So that's why we're paying a lot of attention for enabling users to um, integrate with the different monitoring solutions, different things, how they can see 
if they have a spikes of the requests or someone is trying to pick in some of the uh, some of the APIs. Um, and uh, for example, uh, recent release of Kong uh, Gateway 3.0, we introduced the integration with the Open Telemetry. So it's built in as a part of the product on any tool that supports Open Telemetry uh, can use this like out of the box. So they don't need to be, uh, you know, the vendor specific or like Datadog or Hanicom. All these vendors are support Open Telemetry. And uh, the Kong will simply ship this metric and um, many times uh, people will start seeing like immediately what's the overhead of gateway, what's the services latency, what kind of um, uh, spikes on the traffic they see, what kind of requests and the, 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 the error codes that they generate. Um, maybe um, they would start seeing some of the errors on the certain APIs that they didn't know that people are trying to pick. They would see lots of like a 404 type of errors and things like that. So enabling this like open standards and uh, for us it's also important as, as a vendor to support these open standards. Another elephant in the room is costs. There's a war going on in Ukraine. We are recovering from uh, uh, COVID. There are potential risks of recessions. Uh, companies are looking at cutting down costs. Talk a bit about how much impact will there be on security? Um, is security something that does get affected when it comes to cutting costs or this is an area that nobody touches because security is of utmost importance. Uh, so, so, so talk also a bit about this and also how Kong is making it uh, kind of easier for companies so that they become more cost effective so that they can, you know, instead of cutting down on resources, they can use resources in proper areas. This is like a very interesting and very sensitive uh, the topic for many companies. Um, usually, you know, security budgets grow exponentially as soon as you will find some of the leaks that are happening. Like, oh, all of a sudden, like uh, security is important for our companies. And this is uh, this is something, some decisions where um, the, the engineers and uh, like uh, decision makers and the architects need to take as a you know, as a first thing, security is not afterthought in this these days. It needs to be implemented first. So that's why kind of like things around encryption of the traffic, um, the like in, enabling MTLS, enabling secure communication across like public clouds. That's the thing that people look in first. And we're also trying to support this from from perspective of our products, like with the with the service mesh and stuff like that. Um, another thing is that um, we as a as an API platform uh, would like to provide a better visibility to um, um, to maybe like um, the analyzing and monetizing their APIs and they see like what kind of APIs are getting like more requests or less uh, requests and uh, that's why make them they, they can go and look okay so we see in that those APIs are more important for us and the people are you know calling them over time so we probably should pay more attention to this and maybe invest a little bit in uh, different um, the you know tools to analyze this from perspective of the platform as as a as a again con gateway I I'd like to uh, point out that uh, in gateway 3.0 we we spend a lot of time to um, make libraries that we use internally like FIPS compliant so the, our customers will be you know sure that the stuff that they use in uh, very mission critical applications uh, already you know tested and we're not using any like a funky like a open source libraries so we spend a lot of time with like our internal teams so Kong is um, uh, we like to uh, drink our own champagne so Kong for our managed service, we're also using Kong to expose some of the services for our customers. And uh, we have like internal like security teams that are looking for all the things where uh, different hackers can, you know, attack our managed service. And we use this experience to put it back in the product so the customers can use um, same things that we're using that is good for Kong that will be good for our customers as well. Now let's talk about Kong Incubator, which was introduced at the Kong Summit. First of all, talk a bit about what is the idea, vision, goal behind it? So uh, idea and vision about this was very simple. So um, apart from the products that we officially announce and officially support, um, Kong engineers are doing a lot of things. Uh, on the research and development, um, looking for like, some of the interesting projects that they you know, can uh, contribute. And uh, we decided to have, okay, so we need to have a platform where our users can like very adventurous user can go and look inside what the what this Kong is cooking. That's the 
you know. That's basically the, uh, uh, the the tagline that I came up this during the announcement for uh, for uh, Kong Incubator, and some of the things that we announced during this. I'm, I'm personally super excited. So the uh, one of the biggest thing that um, help us to um, to move in the cloud as a as a you know provide as a managed platform is to optimize the way how we. Our control plane, that's the brain of the of the of the Kong that holds configurations, configuration of the plugins, different routes, service, how this control plane effectively communicates with data planes, actual instances of Kong that push the traffic through. And uh, one of the things that we were working for the last year, it's uh, Coco, which is our new protocol and uh, new version of control plane that we're already running in our cloud. And we want to, some of the users start looking to this one and maybe using in some of the platforms. For example, your organization that use Kong open source and they want to provide Kong internally as a, as a, as a service. So they can leverage this type of technology and uh, they can do the stuff with a uh, new and efficient way. So the Coco essentially, it is a um, control plane and the protocol that is backward compatible with the old version of Kong up to version 2.6, I believe, and uh, allows to manage multiple different versions of uh, Kong data planes across in one 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 place, um, this is the probably the most exciting things uh, that uh, came uh, from uh, from incubator. So apart from that, we're doing a lot of uh, stuff since we in uh, KubeCon. I can talk a little bit about the Kubernetes and uh, things around <clears throat> management and maintaining uh, the Kong inside the Kubernetes. Easiest way to run Kong in Kubernetes is to bring Kong engineers and help them to run Kong in Kubernetes. And we're thinking that, oh, that's not super sustainable, so we need to automate this type of things. Uh, some of the, um, uh, um, my colleague and my uh, my boss, uh, Reza Shafi, he was talking about how to clone yourself through automation, and okay, Let's take this idea and clone a Kong engineer through automation. So that's why we also introduced the Kong gateway operator that will be running inside Kubernetes cluster and uh, manages like a Kong upgrades, configuration changes. So um, the operator pattern is becoming like very popular in, in Kubernetes world. And uh, third, but uh, it's not it's not the end. We still have a, a few uh, products to talk about. This is uh, we're doing a lot of innovation on uh, actual data plane itself, actual um, thing that you know, works with your traffic. So uh, last year at the summit, we made announcement that we start working on the WASM engine for uh, for Kong, so integrate this uh, the WASM runtime inside the Kong. So historically, we use uh, Lua uh, as uh, our language for developing all the plugins, all the functionality that runs on top of uh, Nginx and OpenResty. That's the open source project that we use and contribute back. And now we uh, uh, want to provide the, the another option for, for developers to write their plugins. So they can write, um, say, you Rust developer and you want to write the, um, the plugin for Kong. And with the WASMAX, it's the technology that uh, would be running inside the Kong as, as a core, they will be able to bring any um, the plugins that written in the WebAssembly compatible uh, language. Excellent. So basically, it, the incubator is a place within Kong where a lot of products that project that you folks are working internally go, so they are exposed throughout the organization. So it's not just one team working on it in isolation. Remember the times when the Google was not like shutting down all the projects and there was a project called Google Labs when all this kind of like a 20% of your time going in some of the project right. that you can do and maybe research. So we trying to do maybe similar thing, right? So some of the, uh, some of the stuff that uh, maybe not will end up with the project, right. but it's cool thing to work on. And some of the engineers are really want to show this to people and get some feedback. That's most important thing why we're doing this is uh, kind of like a creating this like a feedback loop and see like, oh, that's cool technology, but have you guys thought about, you know, doing blah there? And I was like, oh, that's a really cool idea. So um, we, we can we can think about this and iterate this. So we have this, um, the concept of technical preview, again, very similar to what the Microsoft did with their kind of technical previews uh, when they were releasing some of the version of Windows or Visual Studio or .NET platform. They were like starting as a technical preview uh, where uh, people can play around. There's no compatibility if you're adventurous and you care about the technologies that we, we care. And uh, you can play around with this and uh, see how this would go. So that's the, that's the idea 
uh, of this kind of like, we didn't want to call it the Kong Labs. I think Incubator was a cool name. Victor, thank you so much for taking time out today and sit down with me. Of course, talk about Incubator. And I think um, that was one of the most uh, interesting aspect of this discussion today. Uh, thanks for sharing your insights on API security. And as usual, I would love to talk to Kong again. Thank you.